Good morning, my name is Tony Grimshaw and I work for a company called Watmore UK. And Watmore UK are the largest plastic manufacturers in the UK. Um, I have to apologise, I've got a cold and I'll try and soldier on. But it's very nice to see so many people turning up for this presentation and I hope I do, that, do you justice. Watmore UK uh, were formed in 1999 and uh, what do we do? We manufacture plastic products, housewares products, storage products, garden products. We operate out of nearly half a million square foot of, of warehousing and manufacturing space in Accrington and Burnley in Lancashire. That's our location, that's some of our machinery. We have 52 machines and we turn over a lot of money. We've recently uh, started to advertise on UK TV and we've had two advertisements so far. I don't know if you've seen them. We've promoted programs like Store It programs. And this is our ranges. We make plastic storage boxes of every size, every color, every style, with wheels, without wheels, with lids, without lids. We make food containers, around the sink items, laundry items, and gardening items. We've appeared, we've appeared on, if you do product spotting on TV, we appear on TV every two or three days, and our products are in most shows. Point out Peter Andre leaving the lady with the large breasts. He's using one of our boxes to bail out. We launched the company in 1999 and we started from scratch, we didn't have anything, we had a few gardening malls and then we spent the rest of the next 10 years trying to take the British market, which we did. We've now got over 1500 SKUs of product in different colours and different uh, styles. And then in, 19, sorry, in 2008, we invested a lot of money in the company. We brought a lot of new machinery in. And the new machinery uh, allowed us an element to grow within the UK market with a lot left. We had about 15 million pounds worth of spur capacity with this machinery. So we decided to explore um, the world. And if I take you back a few slides, and you look at the style of product that we do, You'd say that that's a Chinese import, or Indian import, or Pakistani import, or Italian import. And how could we survive in that form of competition, a little English company? So what we did... We dealt with everybody in the UK. We dealt with all the major multiples. We had, we had SKUs in with every multiple in the UK. We also had 2,000 independent customers. A lot of them are here over this next few days at the exhibition. We became brand and market leader in the UK in 2008. With only one export company with the, was the Republic of Ireland. And we got the customers from the Republic of Ireland here at the show at Spring Fair. As I said, we made a major investment in machinery and space and product. We also realised that any growth within the UK would be organic, uh, because we already dealt with everyone. We were dependent on those companies to grow us. We couldn't find new business because we had, we ex we'd, we'd already uh, achieved business with everybody. So we had, it, there was no growth there that you could actually plan. You had to wait for them to plan it. So we did a SWOT analysis of the situation. Was our product acceptable? Well, we didn't know. We knew it was acceptable in the UK, but every market's got its own little nuances and it's got its own little styles and requirements. So we were, so, sorry, and then there was customer availability. We didn't know any customers outside the, uh, the Republic of Ireland in the UK. There's unforeseen problems that being um, 
being virgin and naive new exporters, we didn't know what to expect there in that category, ambushes and obstacles to us, the naive uh, exporter. Target markets, where should we put our products? Product availability, well I've already said we made a major investment in new machinery, so we had the availability uh, to fulfill any, any markets that we could ex export to. And then the major one is export education. Oops. The thing about being from Lancashire, we're not frightened to ask for help. And there's a lot of help out there. You just need to find the people that will give you the help. Beta is our own, um, our own trade industry. So we got a lot of help from them. UKTI, exceptional. They're running courses, uh, they give advice, they run trips out to countries to explore markets, they provide grants. But you've got to ask to find out how you can get these things. Even our local chamber of commerce, uh, exceptional help, but you've got to ask for it. And word of mouth, we all know people on stands here at the exhibition, just ask. They're, they're, more than, they're more than prepared to help. In fact, sometimes they bore you to death with the help. So you sit down and plan, as you plan anything, you plan a meal. So you plan your, your strategy within the, within the export markets. To get maximum penetration into these markets, or, or to expose yourself to these markets, the main thing is, really, is exhibitions, as this exhibition, Spring Fair, it's, it's, it's a major staging post for, for all manufacturers, importers, and people trying to sell. This is where the buyers are. So in 2008, we did our first uh, overseas trade exhibition at Ambiente in Frankfurt. We had a 28 metre square um, stand, which is about that, there were this, this block where all these people are sitting. Over five days, we had 12 visitors. And if you can imagine, there was two of us on the stand, sat there for five days, and 12 people came on the stand. You know, it says up there where they came from. Within 18 months, those 12 visitors we're customers of What More UK. It's a phenomenal conversion rate. They do say the conversion rate would be 5%. We did 100%. By 2009, we were exporting to 17 countries. But then we hit a major obstacle. I can't even speak English. Uh, I struggle with English. I don't know any other languages, only obscene language and I don't use that in front of customers. So we had to invest in people. So we've invested in machinery, we've invested in product, and now we're investing in people. And we brought in our first uh, multilingual sales manager, and she was a lady who came and had lived in Germany and lived in France, but now lived in Manchester. She spoke German and French fluently. She spoke a little bit of Arabic. She, she could make herself understood in about five or six languages, but her main languages were German and French. In 2010, we went back to Ambiente, and this time we had 100 square metres, which is about the whole audience area in this uh, amphitheatre. And we took three uh, international uh, sales team to that meeting, to that, uh, to that exhibition. And then in 2011, we brought on board our second multilingual, spe multilingual speaker. And we were covering about 12 languages by that time. And again, we went to Ambiente. And then by 2012, we had four people on stand um, who, could, who could speak most languages, Russian, Eastern European languages. And then this year, Sorry, that should say 2014. This year we're going to another uh, uh, international trade show, which is Spore in Cologne. And we'll be taking four, uh, four multilingual speakers with us, as well as the usual sales support team. As it said, their exports are 
export is a, a, a team of four, which is um, it says includes, but it's not. It excludes um, admin. Admin. There's another four people in there, but it's also got a priority because it's been given a director to oversee the whole shooting match. We do training on a on a round round basis. It just, it's just continuous cycle of training. Uh, using UKTI, our, our own chamber, as I said before. We have to invest in a number of things, not only people, but labels. People t t they don't tend to take into account that when you export into other countries, obviously language is an issue. And it's another expense. Brochures, again. But there are grants available. There are grants available. It's just a case of, again, asking who do you, do you get the grants from. Again, exhibitions. We're looking to exhibit now in 2015 in the US and Russia. It's a continuous uh, expansion moving on to other exhibitions. Outside Europe, it's quite an expensive operation to send people out to America, to Australia, to Russia. So that's another expense that's got to be factored in. Now, this is a bit of personal information from our company, and it shows uh, our increase over the years that we've been covering in export. Um, and as you can see, the quite significant increases in, turn, in export turnover. Of course, when you're starting from nothing, it's quite uh, easy to get uh, high, um, high increases. But you'll see now that in 2011, 2012, the contribution to our total turnover was 13.9%. This is a current map of the countries that we export to. And that, if you count those up, it'll count to 47 countries. It's actually 48 thanks to, um, thanks to this exhibition, because yesterday morning we took a new export customer on from International Spring Fair. And it's Gibraltar, believe it or not. We don't deal with Gibraltar. So the Spanish might disagree because we already deal with Spain and they're trying to take Gibraltar back, as you know, but uh, we do class Gibraltar as another country. These are some of the names we deal with. There's the home names that you know, Home Base, Tesco, Wilkinson's, Next. We go through it, we deal with Intermarché, the Dirt to Sea, uh, at, at TRS in, in Australia, solutions in Canada, Germany, Italy, all over the world, all over the world. And they're not insignificant names, there's, a, there's uh, some big companies there. So that's self-explanatory. By 2010 we had 34 countries, 2011 40 countries. And now we've got 47 countries, and as I said yesterday, we took our 48th. Our projection for 2014 is, uh, is more than achievable and understated. We just want 52 countries. Now what we've done is we've gone back to the countries that we've opened and expanded our customer base within those com companies. Countries, sorry. And that's where we want to be by 2020. It's a difficult uh, objective, but it's one that we want to fight to achieve. And basically, that's our presentation. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and now I have to go back to work. So thank you very much for turning up.